everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk. I'm John and today I'm here to actually review a video game for you guys. We're going to be talking about High on Life, the latest game from Squanch Games that was just released on December 12, 2022 for the Xbox One, Series X and S, and for Windows. And if you have Game Pass, it's free as long as you got that subscription. If not, it's going to run you about 60 bucks. And Matt's usually the guy who does the game reviews here on the channel. He's more of the gamer than I am. I'm more of the movie guy. He's more of the gaming guy. But every once in a while, a game catches my eye that really feels like a John game. And this is exactly that. Because High on Life was developed, like I said, by Squanch Games. Your language has the word squanch in it a lot. Doesn't that become tedious and worn out like the Smurf thing? And the head of Squanch Games is Justin Roiland. And if that name sounds familiar, that's because he's also the co-creator of Rick and Morty along with Dan Harmon. And Dan Harmon also co-created Community. So you can kind of figure out their sense of humor. And Justin Roiland, he is truly a gamer. He loves gaming. He started this company because of his love of video games. Not only is he the guy who started the Squanch games and start and co-created Rick and Morty. Uh oh, I gotta get swifty. But he is also the voice of Rick Sanchez and Morty from Rick and Morty. So that voice is very familiar and you just hear it when he talks. And this game was a passion project for him. When I first saw the gameplay for this and I saw the talking guns and how the, how the first gun you get, Kenny sounds just like Morty. And I saw exactly what the premise of this game was. I was like, that game is for me. That's my kind of game. It's a single player only game. So I don't have to worry about getting my ass kicked online like I always do when I go online. And it's just about having fun playing a regular old fashioned single player game. The kind of game that I grew up loving because I was never an online gamer. I would try, I would just get absolutely destroyed online anytime I played even from when I was younger and even at my best I was never that good so I always preferred single-player games where I can get into a narrative I guess that's the movie lover in me I just need a good story and this game is perfect this is the kind of game if you're a fan of Rick and Morty and you know that sense of humor this is the kind of game for you and this is exactly the kind of game for me hey guys I know John is main, the main reviewer on this uh, on this game but I just wanted to jump in real quick and give you my thoughts because I've been playing high on life for a few days now with John and uh, you know I've been doing a lot of the movies this week so I've been busy and he took over the game but I just want to say this game is fucking awesome I'm having a great time with High on Life it really caught me by surprise because when, when you first start the game up it, it brings you into like just some 16-bit game or like a 32-bit game you know uh, an old, F it was like almost like a Doom clone. You're like, what the fuck is this? And there's this guy talking in your ear, talking about a divorce attorney, and it. Just the dialogue's hysterical. Every other word is fuck this, fuck that, and it's just hysterical. I'm, I'm laughing my ass off as I'm playing it, and then it just opens up into the game and then the game with just just colorful world and beautiful art style and just the dialogue and oh my god I'm just having such a great time it's on game pass so I mean what, what do you have to lose but if you don't have game pass get it on PC because I that's where I've been playing it I found on the Xbox that it's been running a bit sluggish on the Series X not unplayable by any means but uh, I downloaded it on my PC, and I've been having a much better time on the PC. It uh, performs much better on PC. But uh, I did play for the first hour or so on the Xbox, and then the next day I played on the PC, and it was a noticeable difference. But again, it's not unplayable on the Xbox, and I think they've been patching it to improve stability and stuff like that. The gunplay is just, it's good. You know, it, it's, it's not clunky. I think it works very, very well for the like the world they created and the game they're creating. I like all the the mo the elements, like the all the movement elements where you can swing around by the knife and it's just it's a ton of fun and the dialogue is hysterical. You got to play this game by yourself in a with no one around distracting you and just listen. Even just the gun just starts bullshitting with you. All the the AI um, like the NPCs in the world they're just listen to a conversation that they're talking about. I think it's it's hysterical. And uh, also one thing I wanted to point out when um, when you're back in your house, I, I don't want to spoil too much, but you're you go to your house a lot. Next to the couch, there's a poster on the wall of Tammy and the T-Rex, and they actually have that movie playing on the TV. The entire movie, you could watch the entire movie in the game, 
and uh, it's a young Paul Walker wearing a crop top, which was I thought was hysterical. But on the bottom right of the poster, it says vinegar syndrome. And I was like, holy shit, vinegar syndrome, like that that's a boutique uh, 4K bl or Blu-ray label. Like the Justin Royal had reached out to them. They had the rights to Tammy versus the T-Rex. And for people who don't know about vinegar syndrome, they just actually did this beautiful release of Roadhouse. So vinegar syndrome does great work. And I just thought it was really cool that they were featured in this game. I thought that was a nice little Easter egg for the physical collectors out there. And just hearing Justin Roiland talk about Vinegar Syndrome, I gotta admit, was pretty damn cool. I'm just having such a great time. And, you know, I'm at work. I'm driving at work all day and I'm just thinking about this game. Like, that means it's a good game in my opinion. If I just can't wait to get back into this world to play it, I'm just having a great time with it. I th Again, the dialogue is hysterical. The story is very interesting and intriguing it, it, it sucked me right in uh, the gameplay is fun the art style is beautiful I, I don't know if I want to say 10 out of 10 but I think the video game awards happened a little too early this year and I think this game definitely had some potential to at least be nominated I just finished Callisto Protocol and I had fun with that until the final boss which was fucked in my opinion but I am having an even better time with this game and again, I just cannot wait to get back into it. But I'll let John finish off the review. I just wanted to give you off my thoughts. And uh, again, it's on Game Pass. Go check it out. What do you have to lose? If you don't have an Xbox, you have a, a PC, check it out on a PC Game Pass. I think it performs even better on PC. So the basic premise of this game is a first person adventure game. It also takes elements from platformers. And I would also say that this is very much a satire of video games in general. It's playing with all the video game tropes that we've known throughout history, and it takes them all, blends them together with a huge bit of comedy, and gives you this game. Because if you're not into the sense of humor of this game, if you're not into the sense of humor of Rick and Morty, this game will not work for you, I think. You really have to be fully on board with what this game is trying to do for you, because as far as the graphics go and the gameplay go, they're good, but they're never great. The graphics, I would say, are in line with a, a high-end Xbox One game. It doesn't feel very next-gen, and that feels almost intentional. And that worked for me personally, but I don't know if that's going to work for everybody. You know, this game is not that silky smooth Call of Duty type of game. You know, the graphics are never trying to hit those kinds of levels to be lifelike. You know, it looks like a cartoon, it plays like a cartoon, and it's never really going for that. You have to be on board with that, I think, because if you're not, it's not going to work for you. It's, this is not anything that's even in the same ballpark as God of War Ragnarok or anything along those lines. Now, it feels almost like something that you would download off of Game Pass in general, but what really makes this game stand out is not the gameplay and the visuals, but it's the story itself, because every single character in this game is written perfectly. And it, like I said, it's got that Rick and Morty sense of humor, so it's really, 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 really funny, as long as you're on board with that. Because the things that these characters say is just absolutely hysterical. Like, I, I had little laugh out loud moments listening to these people talk. You know, you, your lead character himself actually doesn't speak. You know, Kenny, the first gun you get, who is voiced by Justin Roiland and sounds just like Morty. Sure, I don't think they've even fired a gun before today. And, and wait, wait you, you want the house? He does all the talking for you. And, and as you get more galleons or the, or the talking guns, they're actually, they're alien creatures themselves, the talking guns. As you get more of them, you actually get to learn more about those guns' personalities. They all have their distinct personalities. Kenny's the handgun, you get him first. Then you get Gus, who's a shotgun. And my personal favorite is Creature, which is just a shooting gun that shoots out his kids. And he's just so happy to be there with you. And these kids that he shoots out are basically little Mr. Meeseeks, if you remember from Rick and Morty. Like, I can't take it anymore! I just want to die! We all want to die! We're Meeseeks! All, their only premise in this game is to kill and bring you health. That is it. They don't care about doing anything else. And as the as Creature says, who shoots them out, they're perfectly fine with that. Just like Mr. Meeseeks. That's this is how they live. But Creature, he is just my favorite gun. I just love how excited he's, like, he's basically just super brainwashed and everything. He's just, I love you. I'm so happy to be here. He just, all oh, the whole time he's, you have him out, he's just happy to be there. Every gun has their own personality and they're all hysterical. You're going to want to hear every single thing that they say because they're judging you who you're killing and what you're actually doing. But before I get a little too off topic, if you're not familiar with the premise of this game, Earth gets taken over by some sort of aliens called the G3 cartel because they're using humans as drugs. One of the biggest drugs in the entire universe is human beings so they're trying to take all these human beings in and use them as drugs luckily for you you find Kenny that galleon gun he's there to help you out he's able to take your house which includes you and your sister not your parents unfortunately 
and you guys get transported to another planet where you meet a bounty hunter named Gene and he's there to help you. He can't hunt bounty hunt anymore. He's lost his leg. He's a washed up piece of shit now. So basically he's just there freeloading off your couch, but he's helping you out, get some bounties and he teaches you the ways of bounty hunting. And then that's really what the game takes off into because it's a Metrovania style kind of game. After each bounty, you head back to your house, collect the money. You can go buy some upgrades for your talking guns. And that's the basic RPG elements of this because your suit starts to gain some stuff. Because like I said, it's about a, it's a video game that knows it's a video game. So it just keeps adding layers to the platforming of the game, which I truly love too, because there is some basic puzzle solving in this. It takes every element of video games pretty much and lets you play a little bit in them, but it never relies on anything. Like at one point in this game, you get detective mode where you could sneak around and question people. And even that's just one big joke that really pays off in the end and just had me rolling on the floor dying. And that's just basically what this kind of game is. You never have to rely on anything too much. It's never really that hard. You're really just in this for the narrative, but the gameplay itself is still fun. It keeps you coming back. It's nothing too crazy. It's nothing too hard. The enemies you don't have to worry about. It's just some good, clean fun with a really raunchy, dirty sense of humor that I absolutely loved. And the locations you go to never get boring because you start in your house, you go to a bounty machine, you pick your bounty and you go to a different planet and you explore that planet and all the enemies are basically the same, but you basically are working your way to one big boss and these boss fights pay off perfectly. They're all really funny. One in particular did something in a video game that I've never seen any video game ever do. It really did just have me cracking up and the achievement for it again because the achievements are all tongue-in-cheek too. They're all really funny. Like you get an achievement in this game for just doing nothing it, just so it looks funny on your achievement list. I'm not going to spoil what any of these achievements are but just so you know they're just so funny and that's really again just something that I really eat up is the fact that this video game knows it's a video game that it's a satire that it's in on the joke it's never trying to take itself too seriously you're just never going to be bored with this type of game as long as you're into these kinds of games because I can see a lot of people getting on into this game and feeling like it feels pretty old it doesn't feel like a brand new game and I totally understand that there are some flaws to this game I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that this is a perfect game I had some game crashing glitches where the game was supposed to load load up a new group of enemies that is the only way to progress through a boss fight and twice it didn't load up those enemies and I had to restart the game I had some issues where I had some clipping issues uh, certain animations just didn't look right like you would cut people's throats and nothing like you wouldn't see any animation for it. you just see blood fall out and now I'm you know, I think that did kind of still fit in with the art style of the game. But those game crashing glitches can be unfortunate. And I'll admit that they definitely did take me out of it a couple times to where I was like, ah, oh, come on. Like, I, you know, I was a little bit frustrated. But I did hear Justin Roiland talking pretty recently on the Kind of Funny podcast. And he said that they're working on making sure all that stuff gets cleaned up. Because Justin Roiland seems like a really cool dude who just, he's really happy that this game is out there. He just seems like a down to earth guy. And he really put his heart and soul into this game. Him and everybody at Squanch Games. It's only about 60 people. So this is very much an indie studio who is really, obviously he gets to ride off the Rick and Morty name. And if you're a Rick and Morty fan, this is the game for you. So overall, what do I think of this game? I think you're going to really enjoy this game as long as you enjoy that Rick and Morty sense of humor. If you're not into it, this game is absolutely not going to work for you. I think you're going to get bored. I don't think you're going to have a great time because the gameplay and the graphics, the audio, I don't think are enough to keep people coming back. The only thing that's going to keep you coming back is that sense of humor. I wanted to find myself in every single scenario that this game could possibly lay out. I've already beaten the game, which I haven't beaten a game this fast in a long time. That's how hooked I was into this game. I haven't been this hooked on a game probably since earlier in the year with Tiny Tina, which was another satire of video games. And this is my kind of game. I feel like the reviews on this game are very mixed at the moment because I feel like a lot of people are, especially for the $60 price tag, I'll admit, do not buy this game for 60 bucks. It's not a very long game. I think it's the best option for this is if you have a Game Pass subscription, it's absolutely worth it. If not, wait for a sale, 30 bucks. This game is absolutely worth it at that price because the graphics, audio, visuals, the length of the game, what we're used to in 2022 with these 100 hour games, that is not this game. You beat this game once in about 10 to 20 hours. You go back, clean up some achievements. It takes another 10 to 20 hours on the hard is difficulty and that's really it you're going to be looking for easter eggs you're going to be hanging around with the mac and cheese brothers and that's really what this game is about it's all about that story it's all about that comedy it's absolutely not about 
that gameplay, which is fun. I just can't stress that enough. It's really fun. It's just nothing that you haven't done before. It adds little elements, but really it's just letting you play around in this world that they've created, and they want you to really progress through this really, really, really funny story. It's basically one long episode or movie with characters that you do get invested in. If that's something that sounds like you would be interested in, if so, if I'm going to rate this game on a score of 1 to 10, I'm going to give this game a really solid 8 out of 10, other than some game crashing glitches and a little bit of clipping issues throughout, and some other glitches throughout this game. I'm not going to sit here and say it's perfect, but overall, I really do think that this is worth your time. It's not going to be a huge waste of your time if you're not into it, because it's not a very long game. But I really do think that it's something that you should play. I think you're really going to enjoy it and you're going to have a smile on your face the entire time. So I can recommend it pretty highly. And you can grab it right now on Game Pass as long as you have a Game Pass subscription. So that's one of the beauties of Game Pass. But anyway, that's going to do it for us here on our review for High on Life. We hope you like this review. And if you do, nothing helps out the channel more than by you liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and telling all your friends.